Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a Facebook ad for your brand new Shopify store. So if you're a beginner then and you've recently completed your store and you're excited to get started with Facebook ads, then this is the video for you. Or perhaps you've been running ads for a couple of weeks and you've not quite seen the sales that you wanted. Um, so you must be going wrong somewhere. So hopefully then this video will help you out as well. Now, before we jump into the video, I just want to very quickly mention that it doesn't matter how good your Facebook ads are, if you haven't got a professional Shopify store, then you're not going to see the sales that you probably hope for. So my advice to you then is to make sure you at least get some feedback on your store before you start running Facebook ads. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this. Number one, I do run a free Facebook group. You're more than welcome to join that. Post your store link in there and get some feedback from other members. Or you can enter the giveaway I do on every single video. So every single video then I do give away a free one-to-one -one consultation call. And a lot of people then use that time for to go through their store on a Skype call together. So if that is something you want a chance to win, it's dead easy to enter. All you simply have to do is subscribe to my YouTube channel, like this video, and leave a comment down below. It can be any comment you want. You just comment dropshipping, ecom, one to one, and that'll be enough then to secure your entry into that draw. And finally, then, if you commented on my previous video, just make sure you stay tuned to the end of this one where the winner will be announced. And with that being said, then, guys, thanks again for tuning in. I hope you enjoy it and let's get straight into it. So, here we are then inside my ad manager, and these are going to be the two products that I'm going to be showing you how to run ads for. Purely because then these are two different style of products. Number one, this product here is going to be purely demographic based. I'll explain that later on in the video. And then the second video, it's the second video, the second product, sorry, is going to be this cat water fountain here. And the reason I want to show you this one then is because this one's going to be set up purely. Um, the audience is going to be based on interests instead of demographics. So there's quite a nice little video. I didn't put this together myself. I simply took this um, straight off of the AliExpress product page but it quite clearly and nicely demonstrates exactly what the product is so that being said then let's shut these down jump into my ad manager account and I can show you how to create this ad so we'll start from the very beginning then so you can see the process from start to finish I'm just going to very quickly then change my ad manager account and once this loads up then we can finally get started so this is the very beginning screen then. Um, now before you jump into conversion ads, a lot of people have been questioning me about whether you need to build up the engagement on your social platforms or even on the actual post itself. So if you do want to do that, then there's a couple of ways you can go about it. The first thing you want to do is start with an engagement campaign and then you can run two different styles side by side. side, by side. So you can start with post engagement to build up the likes um, shares, comments, etc. on the actual ad itself. So when people come across your ad, it looks like it's got enough social proof, it's got enough comments, etc. So people will trust it more. And then you can also build up the page likes of your actual Facebook page too. Because believe it or not, there will be a lot of people that will actually check out your Facebook page um, just to make sure that you're legit and a proper business because people are going to be skeptical about you as a new business. However, if your goal, ultimate goal is to go for sales, then ultimately you want to be choosing the conversion objective. In terms of the campaign name, then I'm just going to simply name this exactly what the product is so we know what we're dealing with. And then in terms of these two here, I would leave them both as off for now. When, when compulsory campaign budget optimization comes into play, then all you simply need to do is set rules for each ad set to make sure that the budget is split evenly so for example if you wanted to test 10 different ad sets and made sure you spent ten dollars per ad set you would set a campaign budget of a hundred dollars and then just set a rule to make sure that each ad set got ten dollars spent on it anyway with that being said then let's get into the bulk of creating our first ad so in terms of the ad set name i like to fill this in last because i don't always then have a plan of what i'm going to be choosing and selecting therefore i like to go back at the end and actually name it depend um, and actually name it depending on what I've targeted within the ad set if that makes sense well that will all come clear later on in the video in terms of the actual optimization you want to go for we're going to go for the purchase objective if this isn't green on your store then what I recommend is simply just running a test purchase on your store so you can go straight for purchases Moving on then, we're going to ignore these. These are a bit more advanced and we're just going to stick to the basics in this video. Trust me, what I show you in this video will be more than enough to go out there and make your first six figures on Facebook. Now, this is where things get interesting. So in terms of your custom audiences, 
In terms of your custom audiences then, if you've got a new ad account, you won't have any of these if you haven't already created them yet. And essentially, just in case you don't know what they are, you can create lists of people who have performed certain actions on your store or have been to certain pages. And then as it says there, you can then use those custom audiences to create lookalike audiences. I'm not gonna go into too much detail purely because that topic is worthy of a video on its own. Moving on to the locations, age and gender. So the first product I wanna go through then is the, uh, it's what to call it, like a toilet ladder for obviously new parents who are toilet training their children. Um, and this is where the demographics essentially going to come into play because it's going to be primarily a demographic targeted product, if that makes sense. So location, I'm going to stick to UK, living in the UK, I like to start with the UK and if a product proves worthy, then I start to expand into different countries. Age, I'm going to leave 18 to 65 plus purely because the chances are most people know somebody with a young child. Therefore, if they see this product, they might think to buy it as a gift. Um, certainly my sister has a two-year-old and if I see anything that I think would help her or that she'd enjoy um, then I'm always willing to buy it for her just to try and help her out because obviously during times like that then financially things can become very stressful and then gender wise I'm going to leave this as all genders for obvious reasons you don't have to be just a male or just a female to buy this product and then detail tags and this is where essentially we're going to determine the specific audience that we want to show our ad to and this is where the demographics are going to come into play so i'm simply going to hit browse demographics and just purely from experience and playing around with this tool um, for over three years now then i know for a fact that you can actually target parents with certain aged children now a simple google search prior to recording this video i was able to find that most parents kind of toilet train their children between the ages of about one and about three or four so i'm going to select this one as well and essentially what that's going to do now is show our ad to everybody who is on that pre-created list so within facebook's algorithm who are suggested to be parents with toddlers or preschoolers between the ages of one and two and three and five now moving on to the next box this checkbox here um, I'm going to explain what it does and it's up to you whether you want to use it or not. Personally, in the beginning, I don't recommend you do purely because keep an eye on this potential reach. You can see it's 43 million. If I get rid of this checkbox, you can see it's gone down to half a million people. So what ticking this box does is it basically opens the door for Facebook to go out and show your ad to whoever they want to if they believe that audience might convert. Now that can be a good thing because it means you can get better results. But in the beginning, if you're new to Facebook ads, you want to know that what you're doing is working. And by selecting this box, you don't know whether it's your targeting or whether Facebook knowing who to show your ad to. You don't know what's working. But by leaving this unticked, Facebook is going to stay within the parameters you've selected. So if it doesn't work, you know it's because of something that you've done and you'll very quickly learn what works and what doesn't. Moving on then, just to finish off this section, we'll go through the show more options. If I was advertising, so I advertise quite a lot throughout Europe, then I would select certain languages within this box. But since this is a new ad, I'm focusing on one country at a time. I only want um, the UK, therefore I'm just going to leave it as all languages within the UK. Um, and connections, I'm just going to leave that as all people as well. So in terms of actual targeting within the ad set, then this is how I would go about doing something for that particular product that I showed you. What I'm going to do now is just go back, erase all of this and just start the process again, but based on an in, on a primarily interest targeted product. The reason I'm not going to finish this off is purely because all of this will stay the same regardless of the type of products that you're advertising. So moving back to the beginning, then we'll get rid of all of these. We'll leave that ticked as... Um, as standard as default and again a lot of these will stay the same the main thing that's going to change then is this detail tags and section here so if you're new to ads then which you probably are if you're still watching the video by now um, if you are then thank you very much i really do appreciate it in terms of your age and gender i always recommend leaving these as quite broad because you need to find out what works now when you become more experienced so for example then i've been selling within the pet niche for quite a long time i know for a fact the the typical age ranges that are most profitable for me are 45 plus and it's females but in the beginning you want to test absolutely everything you can break the data down once you've been running your ads for a while and you'll soon be able to find out that same information yourself now this product itself then is a cat water fountain and obviously 
People who own cats are from all kinds of different demographics and you can't necessarily target people who just own cats. So what you have to do is use interests to actually target those people. Now what you have to keep in mind now then is that you're trying to target cat owners because only cat owners are going to be interested in a cat product. So you have to try and think along the lines of where are cat owners spending their money? Because if you can target people who are spending money within the cat niche, because if somebody's spending money within the cat niche, the chances are they own a cat and therefore they're going to be interested in your cat product. And this applies to any niche, by the way. You have to think along the same lines, the same principles still apply. So first things first then, what do cats do? They eat, so let's go straight to cat food. So if we just a simple Google search for cat foods and we'll see what comes up. In fact, before we jump into this level of depth, I just want to quickly see if you can actually target cat foods as an interest because as being involved in the dog niche for quite some while, I know for a fact you can target dog food. So maybe you can target cat food, which you can, which is handy. Now, if you guys do want to video specifically on how to find interests. I have already done, recorded and uploaded a video specifically on that topic. If you want to watch this video, then the link will be in the video description below. So we've got an interest here then. Make sure that when you're putting together your detailed targeting, you have this box unchecked so you can see what the overall potential reach is. And then if you choose to tick that box, then that's up to you. Now, what I want to do here, because 1.5 million people is quite a large audience for a new pixel, what you have to remember is that Facebook works on past data. If you have no past data, then it's not necessarily going to know who your ideal customer is. So you might end up spending quite a lot of money before your ads start to get any traction. So one technique or strategy I like to use is called flex targeting, which essentially means you just hit this button here, which narrows the audience. And what that does, as it says there, it's pretty self-explanatory, is that somebody has to be interested in cat food and whatever this interest is here for them to be included in the audience. To find that second interest then, one of the strategies I like to adopt is simply hitting the suggestions box and seeing what comes up. Just keep in the back of your mind, we're trying to pick interests here that are only relatable to people spending money. So the first thing that kind of stands out here is pet store. There's not going to be many people that are interested in pet stores unless they own a pet. So instead of put it in this box here, I want to flex it. So I'm going to put it in this box here and see what that does to our overall potential reach. So I've put that in then, it's taken our potential reach down to 460,000 people, which is perhaps a bit small, um, but I'm more than happy to let this ad run of that. What you've got to remember is that your potential reach is in direct correlation to what your budget is. If you have a high budget, then obviously you can target more people. So with that being said then guys, that is essentially in its fundamental state, how you do the detail tags and section of your Facebook ads. Like I said, if you want a more detailed video on this, I've already uploaded one. I believe it's like 20, maybe even 30 minutes long. It's really in depth. But if you want to go to that next level, then I recommend you check it out. The link will be in the description below. So moving on then just to the final kind of bits, we have the placements. Now this is quite an important part of your ad. And what I recommend doing is that you actually click edit placements and choose the placements yourself for your ad purely because in past experience, my own experience, certainly that I find a lot of these platforms that yes, you can get quite a lot of impressions um, and quite a lot of clicks as well, but the actual quality of the traffic isn't always good. So the strategy that I like to adopt is be quite specific with these initial ads that go out. And then when you set up your retargeting ads, that is when you adopt a lot of these other platforms and placements um, to use. So my recommendation here would be to stick to the places where you can where you're going to command the majority of the space on the actual page or device, whatever it is. So I'm going to get rid of audience network. That's third party space on different websites. They work really well for retargeting ads. When somebody has been on your store once they've shown that interest and by using audience network, you can pretty much follow them all around the internet, no matter where they go. That's one of the beauties of, um, social media marketing. I'm going to get rid of messenger and I'm going to tick that. So it, selects it but then i'm only going to choose the actual news feed itself so i'm going to get rid of marketplace get rid of video feeds get rid of the right column right column rule up right column works really well for retargeting ads by the way and i'm going to get rid of instagram explore we're going to get rid of all the stories get rid of in stream 
get rid of in article and then that leaves just the main ones and as you can see our potential reach hasn't changed sometimes when you play around with these the potential reach may go down it may go up so it's just a matter of finding out where the majority of your audience is spending their time and focusing on that so for example if i was to get rid of facebook news feed perhaps it stayed at 430 oh, so we've lost 30,000 people so if we get rid of the Instagram newsfeed you can see it's gone down quite significantly so what that tells me in fact the majority of our audience potentially can be found on Instagram so with that being said then that is placements covered moving on to the interesting part which is budget and schedule so starting from the top down then we have the optimization for ad delivery i recommend you leave this as conversions as conversions is our ultimate goal here in terms of the cost control i would leave this blank for now until you've been running ads consistently within a niche for a particular product only then do I recommend using this cost control and using this additional bid strategies here as well because what you need to establish first is a base cost, an average cost of what a purchase is going to cost you and then you can come back into these more advanced bid strategies um, and actually get effective results unless you know what the average cost per purchase is going to cost you then you can set yourself up to waste a lot of money or in fact not spend your budget at all if you set your in theory this sounds really good because you could come on here and say i want my average cost per purchase to be one pound but in reality facebook just won't spend your budget because they won't be able to achieve your purchases for that low amount so what you have to do is run an auto bid to begin with until you get consistent results until you know what kind of cost per purchase you can achieve and then only then should you come back and experiment with these advanced bid strategies moving on to the actual budget and schedule itself so again in the beginning i recommend keeping things simple and just sticking to a daily budget if you want me to convert if you want me to cover anything else in this video that i haven't mentioned by the way feel free leave a comment down below and if it gets enough likes enough votes up like this video topic did then i will definitely do a video on that particular topic stick to daily budgets then and what i like to do when i first start out especially with wc campaigns is setting a budget is focusing on say one to five ad sets instead of spreading that budget across say 20 or 30 different ad sets and i like to let them run for at least four days as well and the reason being for that then is because i read a study recently that suggested the results suggested that the average facebook user uses facebook once every two or three days so just by going over the course of four days then you're bound to make sure that you have an even spread of the types of people who would see your ad if that makes sense so to summarize then in terms of the daily budget it's completely up to you the main thing here in my opinion is that you let it run for at least four days wc campaigns and ad sets as well facebook state this themselves they need time to optimize and by letting them run for that additional two or three days then you give them more time to optimize and essentially more of a chance to start delivering efficiently and bring you in some sales with that being said moving on to the final few options now there's not going to be a lot of these i change if at all any especially the conversion window so basically what that means is if you're not sure on any of this by the way you've probably spotted these little eyes that give you an explanation some of them aren't clear so i like to give my own explanation just to try and make them even more clear um, and basically the conversion window is the window so the time frame in which facebook will use the data to determine who to show your ads to so seven days after clicking will mean that anybody who clicks on your ad in a seven day period, Facebook will use all of those people to determine who to show your ads to in the future. Whereas if that was only one day, it would only be the previous past 24 hours. So by, choose seven, by choosing seven days, then essentially there's more people there, more data, and Facebook should be able to make a better decision and deliver your ads more efficiently with all that being said then guys that just about covers everything within the actual ad set level in terms of targeting budget placements audience etc um, just to quickly mention these notices here i tend to ignore them just purely because i like to go in the direction that i want to go and if it doesn't work out then it doesn't work out because of what i've chosen and selected it's a lesson that i'll then learn and can take forward um, and hopefully improve how good I am at running Facebook ads. Anyway, with that being said then guys, I've been talking for about 20 minutes, so I think what I'm going to do is cut this video there, and if you guys want me to go over the actual ad section of this video in like a part two, 
then make sure you request it leave a comment down below saying yes for part two or something along those lines and again if i get enough people asking for that enough people liking somebody's comment that suggests that then i will definitely revisit this topic and finish the video by going over the ad section of creating a facebook ad and with that being said then guys let's get into announcing the winner of the one-to-one -one consultation from the previous video i've got it already loaded up here learning from million dollar drop shipping stores go and check that video out it's had some pretty decent feedback we discovered some pretty interesting products too um, but anyway let's get into announcing the winner so I'm just going to head over to this site here put the URL in, get rid of that get rid of that get rid of that get the YouTube comments 34 unique comments which is absolutely awesome so thank you very much and the winner then of the previous video is that person there so thank you very much for your comment i really do appreciate it hit me up on instagram we can get that call arranged and guys if you just want to get straight down to business and actually book a call right away with me you can do so just make sure you check out the links in the video description below and that being said then guys thanks again for tuning in i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next one